I am Shorodeep, and I am working in Microsoft Azure um, uh, previously for last three years. And Oi, who is not present today, uh, he is one of the FreeBSD committers, also working in Microsoft Azure for last few years. So this is a recent work which we have done uh, in FreeBSD kernel to improve the performance of TLB shutdown in Azure. So so just a brief history of FreeBSD in Azure. So FreeBSD uh, has come in Azure in as public offering in 2016. And that was a collaboration between the FreeBSD Foundation community and Microsoft. And from there on, FreeBSD is regularly uh, coming with the all latest releases, stable releases in Azure. Right now, FreeBSD uh, is available for both Gen 1 and Gen 2 VM in Azure, as well as for the ARM and AMD, both the platform. AMD64 means Intel and AMD64. So now let's come to the actual thing that is TLB. So translation lookup buffer or TLB is one of the part most important performance related uh, thing which is there in every CPU for enhancing the performance during the page lookups. So whenever there is a new page requirement, so it is looked into uh, it is not present in the cache, so it is looked into the TLB, and from the TLB, uh, we get the, if we get the page, it is used. So it is a par code uh, uh, cache, you can say. Every code has their own TLB in the physical system. Now, in case of Azure, Azure runs on Hyper, uh, it uses Hyper-V as its uh, virtualization system. So we have uh, similar virtual TLBs in the hypervisor for every virtual CPU which has been offered to a particular partition. So what we mean by TLB flush and TLB shutdown? So TLB flush is whenever uh, any process, any context switch happens in a process or a process is doing uh, any memory invalidation like unmapping and or it is doing some permission change, etc. That time we go with a TLB flush. So, and it invalidates, either it can invalidate the whole TLB or it can invalidate a part of it or it can invalidate a particular page itself in the TLB. And in a hyperscaler system like uh, which is in Azure, so you need to synchronize this TLB invalidation in multiple CPUs based on, on what all CPUs this particular address space is active. So in, uh, in when you are doing a TLV invalidation, the AMD64 architecture provides this instruction, invalidate uh, page, that is INV LPG. And it has already got, uh, when we are doing it, so it is a performance critical thing. And when we do, uh, for multi CPUs with uh, synchronizing the TLB in multiple CPUs, that time we need to do IPIs to all those CPUs where all this TLB is active. And that IPI is a thing which needs to be implemented by the operating system kernel to initiate the IPI for all those particular codes. Now, why this work is critical for us or important for us is that this IPI is when we are doing from the, just from the kernel, we are doing the IPI. It is quite, uh, it has got a performance toll because the processors which are virtual processors are mapped with the physical processor which is not known to the kernel by default. That has been maintained by the hypervisor. And 
whenever we are scheduling the IPI, this is a blocking call. So it hits bar code and it waits for that invalidation to get finished and then it comes back. And that particular processor code gets in a waiting state till the invalidation is done and then it resumes its next instruction pointer. Now, this mapping of this CPUs and the sending the IPI on this virtualized processor is a performance impacting factor. Uh, so, so, the solution we thought of in this is using hypercalls. So what is a hypercall? Hypercall, as we know it, is an interface which is provided by the hypervisor to the guest OS to use that hypercall as an interface to communicate directly with the Hyper-V and send particular commands. In this case, Hyper-V provides hypercalls for this TLB flushing. So it provides TLB flushing for multiple, like more than 64 CPUs as well as less than 64 CPUs. There are two different hypercalls they provide, as well as it provides certain flags by which you can invalidate a particular page, you can do uh, set of pages or you can do uh, non-global pages as well as global pages. So the implementation required two things. First is Hyper-V's uh, guest enlightenment. That means to aware, make the guest aware that these features are available in the Hyper-V and use them. Second is to set up the functionality to use those hypercalls and uh, do the flushing. So for this work, we have done following major changes. So in existing FreeBSD, not existing, prior to this work in FreeBSD for the remote TLB shutdown, we had SMP targeted TLB shutdown which is a native TLB shutdown, and it uses the IPI. So we had refactored that code, and whenever the system realizes that it is running on Hyper-V, instead of going with SMP targeted TLB shutdown, it will bypass to the Hyper-V VM TLB flush. And this initialization happens after the Hyper-V is initialized in the guest OS in the FreeBSD. And then we have introduced new hypercall mechanisms for processor where the SKU size having capacity of the processor more than 64. That needs a repetitive hypercall. Then we have added this new uh, hypercall systems. And also the implementation has used the FreeBSD invalidate opcodes to decide what type of uh, flushing needs to be done. The implementation has been done mainly in two commits. And other than this, some few more commits have gone into this work. One which has enabled a sysctl switch for the uh, FreeBSD. So that switch by default is enabled. So it will be using the Hyper-V TLB flush when running on Azure, but if required, you can disable the switch and it will go back to using the native uh, SMP TLB shutdown. Now here are some interesting factors. So as we can see, we have, <coughs> so one important thing, this performance number gets impacted as the number of core sizes increases because of the IPI. So if we see, we have taken a 48 core, 48 CPU based system in Azure, and then we have measured the performance matrix. So the IPI based TLB shutdown was taking 27 microseconds, whereas new hypercall based system is taking 14.7 microseconds on average. To do this, we have actually used uh, FreeBSD build, means we have built FreeBSD with JA100 
to hit as many as uh, till shoot down. And there we have <coughs> used uh, nano get uptime and uh, command uh, API to get the particular uh, SMPTLB shutdown performance. Now this is a comparison between the Intel and AMD in Azure. So the AMD particular one, if you see, uh, that has got IPI much bigger number than Intel because of the one is CPU frequency. So if you see the CPU frequency in Intel is higher in this case. And, but both the cases we can see near about 40% improvement again. Now, this is the comparison we have done between uh, Azure SKU, which has got 16 CPUs and one with again 48. So as I was telling, hello, as I was telling, so when the number of cores are increasing, we can see the IPI based TLB shutdown is also increasing. So it is 27 microsecond, whereas this is 12 microsecond in case of uh, 16 CPUs. And hypercall has reduced again, we can see like 40%. Now this is another interesting. So we have compared quite a similar SKU from AWS and at least from the CPU, number of CPUs, it matches. Yeah, RAM size we have not found, which matches the one which we have got in the Azure for this. So, but if we see that IPI in uh, Azure and AWS, it was taking approximately similar time, but after the introduction of Hypercall, this mechanism, Hyper-V interfaces, we have reduced it in 14.7. So it is also having a greater num better performance number with respect to AWS currently. So this was done with FreeBSD 15 build. So these are the two challenges which we have faced during this course of work. One was currently, uh, when we are doing this benchmarking, we are seeing this performance numbers on the micro level when we are measuring the uh, total TLB shutdown in a big workload. But in the macro level for the whole world, we are not able to find much differences. So it will be good if anyone can suggest from the audience or from the foundation or community to give some idea on what kind of macro workload we can test to get uh, a good number. We have already tried with uh, multi-thread a map and one map programs by pinning affinity to different, different CPU cores for the thread. But still, we are not getting substantial number there. But yeah, micro level it is always giving. And another thing is that when we started this work, so we found that Zen had done similar kind of work, but Zen hypervisor. But what they had done, they have actually uh, used the IPI to ch change to use the Zen IPI mechanism instead of using the uh, normal kernel IPI mechanism. But then they were using the invalidate LPG call only to do the part CPU code invalidation. So they have not offloaded the uh, TLB issue down fully to the hypervisor, maybe because the hypercall is not present for that. So one thing we have found, there is no generic para-virtualization uh, framework which is present in the BSD kernel right now with which we can offload certain works like IPI, spin lock, or this kind of MMU related operations from uh, operating system uh, or from the bare metal based operating system to offload it to directly to the hypervisors. So yeah, we are thinking of doing it. Maybe we will need uh, the help from the FreeBSD community if we want to introduce this para-virtualization framework in FreeBSD kernel. And these are the references of the work. So this is the uh, part CPU. Uh, so Hyper-V uses CPU schedulers, which is actually critical for this kind of IPI work. So 
the current type of CAD users has been mentioned here, what, what Hyper-V uses. Second is the TLFS, which specifies all the different hypercal commands and their uh, details. Third is, this is a paper published on IEEE, which discusses the similar problem which has been seen in virtual machines running on hypervisors, different types like KVM or any other hypervisors, where the hypervisor-based offloading is missing. Okay. Thanks. So any questions? I guess I've finished quite quickly. No questions? Okay. <laughs> Fine. Sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Do you have any stack categories for COD shootdowns? Uh, Do we know how many COD shootdowns we, we have? Yes, yeah, we have that quantification. So. I don't need to include stack or um, control or anything. No, in that way you cannot see uh, because <laughs> uh, uh, that currently is stat, yeah, doesn't provide. But what we had done. We have actually added uh, this uh, micro get time and nano get time function. Just so if you hook to uh, SMP TLB shutdown function, which is the parent function, if you hook that using, I guess you can parse or also something you can hook that. So then you can get how many times that is getting called. So we have found during our work, uh, like when we are compiling FreeBSD uh, full with the world and kernel we are building in a fresh system with 100 threads and 48 CPUs. Uh, we are getting about 50,000 times the TLB shutdown has been called. Any more questions? Okay then. Yes. Yeah, so we have uh, tried with different TLB thrashing or TLB shutdown initiating programs, like I was mentioning, but they will initiate the shutdown, but then to see the performance number, it is actually we have to in, uh, put a micro get time before and after the calling of the function just to get the total number of sec microseconds or nanoseconds have been uh, used. But when we are doing it on the macro level, total time consumed during the work, it is not substantial because maybe one thing is that current, whatever we have tested, the number of CPUs is like 64 kind of that. So it impacts more as you are going, growing the number of CPUs more. So that time 
that value. And also we got that information that SAP has something that if we run, but we don't know how, I actually frankly speaking, I don't know how to configure SAP on FreeBSD. So uh, if you are running SAP, uh, it actually does a lot of, it uses a lot of TLB shutdown and it gives a macro level value. So, but when I was discussing with Wei, so we were like, okay, we don't know how to in, do that uh, SAP in the FreeBSD. Maybe, yeah, we can figure that out. And any application, if someone can come up with any application, because this is right now in the upstream, and FreeBSD 15 has got this change. So anyone can write it and try it on the Azure, any application, which can showcase this thing. Anything? Okay, I guess, good, <laughs> okay, thank you everyone.